Hello everybody and welcome once again to the monologues, Life with Mona. So today we are talking about being a single mother. So me, I've never wanted to be a mother, ever. Um, when I was 16, I finished high school early. So when I was 16, a lot of my peers were like in their tw early 20s, um, 19, you know, 20, 21. And almost all of them, of course, at the time, you know, you finished high school, yes, you were thinking of university, but at the same time, you're sort of thinking of, you know, your marriage, your partner, your children. And I was fine with the marriage and partner thing, but I was like, me, no, 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 motherhood, nah, not for me. Then I was told, yeah, you're young. In fact, you shouldn't even be talking about it. You're younger than us, so, you know, give yourself time. And then I got to, they were like, oh, when you get to 23, 24, 25 there, you want children. Got to 23, 24, 25, nope. I was like, eh, eh, maybe I'm too selfish. Whatever it is, don't want kids. Then I was told, wait until you get married. You want children. Got married. One of the things that I was most horrified about before I thought about the wedding dress, my thing was, let us find good contraceptives. That was me. I did not want to get pregnant at all throughout my, my marriage. Luckily for me, my ex-hubby at the time was also not that interested in kids, so we were fine. Then I got my divorce and then I was told, you know, now that you're divorced, you know, you have the chance of growing old alone and having cats. So you should think of children, you know, just to keep you company in your old age. Eh, nah, had no impulse. Zero, zero, zero. I was like, it's fine. I will buy cats and dogs and fish. I will be okay. I don't want children. Then I turned 40 this year. I think, I don't know, maybe it's my body's like, Mona, we're running out of time. It's now, it's now. Whatever it is. Especially in the past month, I've been thinking a lot about motherhood. And I think my body is really trying to get me into this mood because you know how you, you have that really strong, strong impulse? What if I was a mother? I sent my sister a message one day um, on WhatsApp and I told her, you know what? For the first time in my life, I'm not horrified at the prospect of motherhood. I swear to God, she was about to call me in the middle of a workday with a time difference of like eight hours, she's in the States, to say, who are you and what have you done with my sister? I had to tell my sister, I'm not saying I want to have a baby or I'm going to try and have a, have a baby. I'm saying I'm not horrified at the prospect of having a baby. After all, I was thinking, it's a human being, right? I've spent so much of my life with some people who I love, some people who I don't love, some people who I don't want to be near, but you have to be near them. So this is your baby. This is like a life that you have brought into the world. How bad can it be? I know just by me saying that you realize how far from the thought of motherhood I was. For me, a step up is saying, how bad can it be? It's a baby. It's a human being. But then as I was thinking about that, and first of all, even before I get to the thoughts that came afterwards, it was actually quite a fulfilling thought to imagine that I would have brought a life. This little being would be living inside of me and I would have to change how I'm living, you know, I'd have to change what I'm eating, I'd have to change what I'm drinking, I'd have to change my entire pattern so that this soul that trusted me to be the vehicle into the world can come into the world. And then after that, you have to guide them to the point where they can make their own decisions. And that was such a powerful, powerful motion and emotion for me to go through it when I thought about it. And this lasted for about seven days, two weeks. And in the process of all that, I started thinking my reality today right now, being single, would be that if I did get pregnant, it would, number one, probably be unplanned. And number two, because it was unplanned, I would be completely unsure of how the father would take it. And this is a reality that a lot of women face. And usually for single mothers, we talk about after the fact, you know, you have a baby, how do you do what's best for the baby? I think that's generally the conversation we have. I have a lot of friends who are single mothers. And to be honest with you, as difficult as it is to raise a child alone, there's a whole other aspect to this of the emotions that you're going through. You know, you have an unplanned pregnancy, for instance. How do you break the news to the father? Um, if he doesn't want the baby, what do you do? You know, do you keep the baby? Do you, in the society where that's the only option, the only legal option, number one, and number two, even society will frown. Even if you did it in a legal setting, society would still frown at you. How do you deal with that? You're, you're a woman, different ages. You could be 18, you could be 25, you could be 40, and you're in this situation. And I think the emotions, even if they're different, like for me, I thought there's nothing that would justify me ending a life of, of, of a baby right now. You know, I am financially capable of bringing up a child, or I could be financially capable of bringing up a child. I have a support system in terms of friends and family, you know, so the child would be loved. And I could not think of any logical reason why I would end a life, you know, for my own comfort. I, I couldn't think of that. 
But there are some people who are in a worse situation where they don't have the financial capability, number one. They do not have the support system, number two. And we're not talking to these women about how they are as women, how they can survive as women through this. You know, we are, we are focusing on the baby and on the child, but what about the mother? And on the flip side of this, there are men who have been called deadbeat dads, for instance. There was a while ago where the whole Facebook was, you know, exploding with this deadbeat dads. Women were going on there and they were, you know, rubbishing men who walked away from their children and all these things. And it's justified. I don't think anybody should walk away from a human being. You know, actually, in these seven days when I was really thinking about motherhood, I could not understand why a full-grown human would walk away from something that they were responsible to, something that was innocent in being brought into the world. I couldn't understand it. But it's still a conversation we need to have. Again, for the men, what we all talk about is shame on him, shame on him, shame on him. But nobody really goes into the psyche of what it is. What's he going through? He's going about his day, he's at work, he's doing what he's doing, and boom, you're going to be a father. He didn't expect to be a father, you know, if it's unplanned. What's he going through? We, we never talk about that aspect. We just talk about the aspect of him walking away from the baby. For the woman, we never talk about what she's going through as a human being. We're just talking about how she can be a mother. So in our conversation this week, I'd like us to explore all aspects of this reality. There's so many single parent homes in Kenya today. Some are because, you know, somebody was one night stand. Some are you had a boyfriend who dipped. Some they were with a married man. Some the husband passed away or the boyfriend passed away. Whatever it is, it's a reality. And I think we need to talk about it from a 360 view where we're considering that if a flawed human being or a broken human being brings another human being into the world, chances of this human being turning out broken are high. So it's not just about taking care of the babies. It's also taking care of the humans who are having the babies. So this is our topic this week on Life with Mona. I hope you'll join me and um, let's explore it and see where we can go. These are the monologues. <laughs>